gone fishing. Just come back from a shopping spree on the land. Successful one. What you got? One three kilogram Bangkok. Wow. <laughs> and sure, about four kilograms of mangosteen. Good haul. <laughs> so the ants like to make houses under this little lip on the mangosteen skin. If I lift this up. Ah. <laughs> and at least our miniature Scopi made an appearance. <laughs> Whoa! Woo. Yo, <laughs> I think I caught on film. <laughs> yeah, we, we bought this for the house thinking it was a normal size one and it came as a miniature one, but as Chris said, at least we, we found a very good use for it. So here I am walking out from the old and into the new. We've done a lot of work this side of the land over the last, I must admit, it's nearly four weeks since we've recorded something for you guys. So let's jump straight in and we'll show you what you've been up to this week. So one of my favorite additions this last month that we've managed to complete is a new path all the way down to our shed area. It just makes it so much easier to be able to walk there and back, especially in the rainy season with all the mud and the slippage. So we've done it the same style as the previous ones. It's nice and aesthetic. It's also quite slip proof as well as in the sun, it doesn't get too hot. So we can also walk here in the, in the dry season and not burn our feet. By having our shed area here as well, we've managed to move Amy's seedlings, giving them a new little home here under cover. So with having our new path, we're able to give a little bit more attention to our shed area. Um, so we've given some store, like proper storage for all our tools because they've just been in the way the whole time. We've got a nice countertop over here. We've managed to store all our um, bamboo ladders to keep them out the rain finally. And just in front of this, we've got our teak, or like I like to call our teenage teak that we've stored, that we've also covered. And sort of an afterthought, we also decided to extend the path um, a little bit further down where we created three terraces, where we are currently using it as a little nursery. And then as you can see, obviously the roof is just got a temporary tarp over it. Uh, the main reason for this is we're not exactly sure what our roof finish on the house is gonna be. We must probably match it up with whatever we end up using from the house. And then over here, you can see we've just started a new wall. We're super grateful that we're able to take our time on designing this because it's always difficult on plan to sort of draw paths and see how it feels. So really feeling the layer of the land and where we're needing paths um, because you don't want paths everywhere. So a critical aspect is our, is our shed area over here and our main path is that side. So we're needing sort of an adjoining path and we thought why not incorporate that with some sort of aesthetic feel Whoa, no path yet. So we, we're sloping it up at a, at, to quite a little height over there. And then what we'll end up doing is bringing in soil on this side over here sort of to, to create a mound. And our house being up there is gonna create a beautiful feature, just an aesthetic feel from, from the house as well. And then another big eyesore that we managed to rid ourselves of that came along with the property was this old piece of uh, building. I'm not sure what they use it for, some sort of storage area or something like that. Um, but as you can see, this is the rubble for it. So we demolished that. Last wall standing. Yeah. Must probably push it over. This is what's um, happening to the poor polar bears. It's the, it's the um, global warming. And then it just decreases its poor iceberg. And then sooner or later, it sits with, with no iceberg. And then he dies. When I was young, I used to do stories like that. And then he dies. And then he dies. <laughs> That's the end of the story. The end. The end. I got tired <laughs> of writing the story. He, he dies. The end. <laughs> That was positioned over here um, and this is where we're planning on building the house so for us to really understand and feel exactly where the house needs to be positioned that was number one for us to get down so we got that down and since paths are quite a feature of this video another thing that we managed to do this week was to high pressure 
our whole existing staircase structure and path structure that goes all the way to the other side of the land. Ghostbuster Chris in action. Okay, what do I look like? I think I look like a Ghostbuster. I got my backpack. It's just, it's just not on me, but there it is. It's coming from like 80 meters <laughs> that way. We did consider a battery powered, but it wouldn't be strong enough. So what we're doing is we're cleaning our paths because when um, after I don't think it's ever been cleaned with all the rain, hell of a lot of mold, not mold, moss, and we slip on that quick, quick. Um, so getting that clean, so no injuries going forward. Now it's a wonderful path that we can um, access very easily. And the other thing I also did up here is managed to finally get our um, charcoal kiln working. It's going. So before we had quite a lot of dark, dark smoke coming out, and as you can see, it's lightening up. There's supposed to be no smoke at all. That's the whole point. Great charcoal without smoke, so it's going. We had lots of old bamboo that we um, had left over from structures that we made on the land and that dried very nicely over the last couple of months. So we used that to make our charcoal. So you can maybe hear crackling and the thought process around wetting it is exactly this where it's got microscopic little holes that you can just, just see with the eye and as soon as you water it then it pops all those little things and makes even more little holes and each hole is a little house for a microorganism. What the guy said is you make this charcoal and then it's houses for microorganisms and then you wet it and you've made hotels for them. <laughs> How's it looking? Bamboo as it was. And the charcoal we're going to be using for numerous things. One is uh, filtering our water, um, including it in creating very nutrient rich soil. Um, sure, and amongst other things, we're even using it inside our house to absorb moisture. And yeah, so just loving all the byproducts from all the different natural resources that we're using. Um, we'll keep you posted for all the other ones that we end up doing. Chris finding creative ways to store this 50 meter long. Thick. Extension. Uh, sure. So initially we had set up our tomato trellises over here. As you can see, it's not doing so well. We're starting to learn that it wasn't a long-term solution to use bamboo because ooh, with the rainy season arriving, it just slowly starts to deteriorate. So although we are getting some beautiful cherry tomatoes growing, as you can see over here. Oh, one must have fallen or someone must have eaten one. That was me. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. We are getting some beautiful tomatoes here. We decided to build a more long-term solution on the other side of the land, which I'll show you in a bit. So we, we received 90 new plants and fruit trees last week. So we got planting over here. You can see I've planted a pineapple, a mango, a soap berry tree, soap nut tree, as well as a cinnamon tree on this side. So initially we're a bit hesitant to plant too many trees too close together. It's quite difficult to picture how big this little mango tree is going to grow in five to seven years time. But we're learning that it's actually better to plant more trees and not worry too much about the spacing. As we've already seen, one or two of our baby fruit trees have been taken out by a falling palm leaf or a falling tree. And so the last thing we want is to not plant enough trees down the line and regret it. So we're planting as many as we can. And if we need to down the line, cut down one or two, we can always do that. So our planted bed area is growing along nicely. You can see we've created a temporary path here with some peanut grass. We're allowed to misplant as much peanut grass as we can to optimize on the rainy season. I'm still busy growing my seedlings to go into these planter beds. They're not ready to come out into the wild just yet. I'm planning to do a, a three sisters planter bed here, which includes corn, beans, and butternut. Haven't yet planted the butternut, but the corn and beans are growing nicely. Ah, look at our tomato plants they've taken. 
So these tall tomato plants are actually transplanted yesterday from the tomato trellises at the top and although they were looking a bit sad yesterday, it looks like they've taken to their new home, which I'm so happy about. And as you can see here, I've, I've tried something that I found online, which is actually tying twine. I, I asked Chris to build me this big bamboo structure so that I could do this. Number one, to create um, a cover for the rain and also to be able to tie these twine strings to the bamboo so that the tomato plants can climb up them and be nice and supportive, which seems to be working really well. So once Chris got the initial bamboo structure up without the cover, we were super excited to get planting. So we got planting our little tomato seedlings. <laughs> Tell us what you're doing. So we had perfect climbing with the, one of our banana trees falling over. Um, luckily it already gave a little seedling, so we've got another banana where it is. Um, but what we've seen the locals doing is when they plant uh, very small um, vegetables or fruit, um, and then you protect it from the rain during the rainy season, they use this and they make a little tent over it. Like that. And then the bulk of the rain doesn't penetrate it or hit it too hard but it still gets the light of the sun rising and setting on the side. Despite putting the banana stump covers on, the rain was a bit too much and we lost many of our baby seedlings, so I'm busy planting more. But the ones that have made it seem to be stronger than ever. I've also planted some, some basil here on both sides just to help with, with pests. I believe that it supports the tomato plants nicely. And yeah, I'll keep you posted on how they grow. to keep our eye on all these young fruit trees that they're not getting new shoots that are taking energy from the main plant to make sure they're not falling over <laughs> to make sure that they've got a leader main leader going up to make sure that the structure is growing well so it's not coming off so easily <laughs> here we go and to make sure that the weeds aren't growing up the tree we've had a few creepers that start to strangle the baby tree so just got to keep our eye we started our, our dragon fruit farm on that side we are still growing as many as we can on the stumps on the land so we've got four around each of these tree stumps over here you can see these are growing above the, the stump which means that they're going to be ready to start growing over so Chris and I are going to try to source some scooter tires to go around here so that these dragons can start creeping over and start producing ah Oh, Nasturtium's getting a new flower, mister. It reminds me of home. Where's he going to be? We're hoping he's going to grow up here and that this becomes a beautiful green feature. <laughs> so we had our first panjor set up on our land and that was part of the Balinese Golungan Festival. It's probably one of the most celebrated festivals. It's a 10-day festival and part of the celebration is to put up one of these bamboo panjors outside at the entrance of your house. So our local helpers family brought all the materials to the land and made one up for us over here. It's amazing to see how resourceful they are. It's probably 99% made from natural materials with an exception of the, the staples and a few colorful decorations that they add. They even picked two mangbees from our trees to hang on there, which was quite special for us. So it's still up, it's looking beautiful at the entrance of our house, and it's also beautiful to drive down the road and see all the handmade panjors hanging outside all the houses. Ah, this garden is growing so abundantly, especially since the rainy season arrived. I mean, look at these banana trees, Chris. Look at the new baby. It's not even a baby, it's like a teenager now. Woo. When are these trees gonna start bearing us some fruits? We can't wait. It's quite funny because the trees that grow out of our compost pit seem to grow even better than the ones I plant. So here you can see there's two papaya trees. Here's a jackfruit tree growing. There's a durian tree growing. So yeah, unfortunately, we don't know the quality of the fruits that grow out of here. That's why we prefer to select our seeds and grow them ourselves. But it is quite ironic that they grow even better on their own. Mm. 
So that's a wrap for this month's update instead of week's update as normal. Um, but as we're standing here, we realize that we've been here, well, on the land for six months and in Bali for just, just over, about a year, just over yeah. a year now. So maybe a little six month update video is uh, on the cards for Amy. She's yeah. the maestro. <laughs> it's difficult to capture everything in our, in our short updates. Yeah. I think I might do another video um, showing a bit of befores and afters to really show you what's transpired here, what we've managed to do in six months and how much has grown in six months. Yeah. So let's see. Thanks okay. for watching. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>